All right, before we continue with the next topics, so I just want to make some clarification, some correction, okay, a bit of correction from the previous material that I have covered. And uh, because this one, saya terlupa, eh, terlepas pandang, eh, so terlepas pandang, uh, this error actually dah uh, discovered last semester, tapi saya terlupa nak uh, update dalam saya punya slides, eh. So, Sepatutnya saya update terus eh. So, saya terlupa nak update. So, this is regarding the example that we have discussed earlier. So, nanti dalam video YouTube tu saya akan buat komen kat situ. Untuk perbetulkan. Okay. Uh, if you look through the example that I have uh, given previously. So, in this slide it says that the original one saying that this is independent population. T-test for independent population for equal variances. Okay. For equal variance, uh, sorry, unequal variance. The actual one is unequal. Uh, the original one is unequal variance. But uh, actually, uh, the formula given here is actually for the equal variance uh, case. Eh? So this is for equal variance, actually, not for unequal variance. So that that is the the correction that I want to make before we proceed with our discussion for the next one. Okay. So that's why in this situation, kalau you perhatikan dekat sini, uh, if you can compare the table, uh, this uh, this formula with the table that I have provided in my course website. So this is refer to the first one where you have assumption of equal variance. Okay, so the assumption of equal variance, and then we have the sp squared equal to this one. Eh? Uh, for the unequal variance, this will be the formula. Okay, for the unequal variance, this will be the formula whereby uh, we have different ways of calculating the decrease of freedom. Okay, so that is the the correction that I want to make from the previous lecture. So please take note. So yang ni saya dah betulkan. Nanti insyaAllah benda tu dah akan betul lah dalam yang asal eh. So, in this situation, uh, yang lain-lain itu semua sama lah. Cuma dari segi dia punya nilai-nilai itulah yang ni. So, this will be the equivalence. And then, uh, last time we have looked through how we can calculate the example given here. Okay. You, uh, and I ask you to try this yourself. Kalau katakan you nak gunakan SPSS, boleh gunakan SPSS. Uh, for this particular example. Okay, and then you can calculate this one. Uh, and you will get the same result as shown in the screen, on the screen right now. And I also have mentioned the explanation on each of the items that I have highlighted. Okay. So this is another example of equal variance assumed. When you read the tables, you read the output from the table. Sorry, you read the information from the output table given by SPSS, right? Okay. All right. So the example that I have discussed earlier is for the equal variance assumed. If you have an unequal variance, okay. If you have an unequal variance assumed or uh, the result give you an unequal variance output. Okay, so this is the formula that you have to use. Eh? So yeah, the formula in kat bawah ni. Okay, assume that sigma one not equal to sigma two, and the t statistic is being calculated using this formula: x bar one minus x bar two minus d zero, the mu one minus d two. Uh, sorry, uh, mu one minus mu two. And then divided by the standard error that is uh, S I S one squared divided by N one and S two squared divided by N two. The only difference is that the degrees of freedom calculation. Okay, the degrees of freedom calculation where you have to calculate the degrees of freedom using the using the given information. Okay, given the, using the given formulas. Yang lain lain tu semua sama saja. Okay. Boleh eh? 
Okay, uh, in your manual, you will see that 4.3.2. So, yeah, I need the manual you all. Eh? So, you have the 4.3.2. If you still have your manual with you. It mentioned here the testing, the, uh, testing the difference between two means of independent sample using the t-test. And also uh, using the t-test. And then they give you two formulas. So, in this situation, uh, bila katakan masuk order bukan maksudnya dia boleh replace eh no in this situation it depends on the number of sample size and so and so on eh? so for this case kalau you perhatikan dekat sini so this one is actually for uh, unequal variances eh okay, this is for unequal variances and this one is actually for equal variance. So this is for equal variances. Okay. And of course for the equal variances, uh, you have the formulas to be like this. Eh? So this will be the formula. Cuma kat sini, dia punya degrees of freedom lah. So the degrees of freedom, you have to calculate using the uh, formula for degrees of freedom. Meanwhile, for this one, the degrees of freedom. So, untuk yang the second one here. So, for this one, the degrees of freedom will be N1 plus N2 minus 2. Eh? So, this is for the equivalence assume. Okay. So, these are the things that you all can think about in your own textbook. So, make sure that uh, you know what it is. Eh? So, yeah, the first one is actually for unequal variance. And of course, for the unequal variance, the calculation of degrees of freedom will be a bit different, right? Okay. And then, at the example as this, so the same example as what you see in your slides. Eh? Tak ada masalah itu, eh? Okay, and then uh, last time also we have mentioned how we can use the uh, p-value methods to solve the problem. So in terms of the p-value method, you have to be very, very careful because if you are using the uh, output given by SPSS, normally the given p-value is in two-tail form. If you have a one-tail uh, Hypothesis testing, that means you have to divide the p-value with 2. Then you will get the p-value for one tail test. Okay, so yang tu you can never hati-hati lah. Alright. So this is given in your... Uh, okay. So, in my slides, I am using uh, the same example for equal variances, right? Uh, for the unequal variance, if you look through this one, okay, you don't confuse dengan ni, eh? sebab yang dalam tu saya dah ubah pada equal variance, assume, eh? but in your manual, they still use the unequal variance, that's why you can see that the degrees of freedom here, this is actually not right. Okay, uh, the degrees of freedom kat sini tak berapa betul eh. So, yang ni you kena betulkan. Okay, so this one you have to be, uh, you have to uh, check balik eh. So, this one you kena check balik. So, ada sedikit mistake kat sini. Dia orang tu silap terlupa nak ubah lah ni eh. So, this part eh. Okay, this part eh. So, the degrees of freedom because this one is not equal. So, the degrees of freedom is not n plus 1, n plus n1 plus n2 minus 2 eh. So, the degrees of freedom will be this one. Okay, v ni eh. So, v equal to s1 squared divided by n1 plus s2 squared divided by n2 and then divided by these values. Okay. So, kena betulkan yang tu eh. So, baru lah you boleh dapatkan dia punya nilai yang betul. So, in this case, uh, kalau nak betulkan, saya betulkan sedikit kat sini. Eh? So, you have to take this uh, degrees of freedom and replace with that one eh. So, it will be S1 and S1 uh, eh. 
So the degrees of freedom here should be equal to the other S1 divided by okay, S1 divided by N1 squared. Eh? So you can ambilkan dia punya S1 lah. So mana dia punya S1? So in this case, kalau S1 dia adalah bernilai 8 ounce. Okay, 8 and then the second one is 5. So it will be 8 square divide. Okay, lah. Macam tebal sangat lah pula. Eh. Okay, saya erase tu. Okay, the degrees of freedom will be 8 square divided by 10 plus 5 square divided by 8 and then the whole thing square I guess eh and then divided by so kalau tengok kat sini bagi dengan S1 N1 kuasa 2 bagi dengan N1 minus 1 N2 minus 2 1 eh so kita akan bagikan so what you get here will be x over 10 square okay. okay divided by 10 minus 1 plus Then you have 5 square divided by 8 square divided by uh, 8 minus 1. Okay, so you're going to keep the unit. So when you calculate this one, you should get the degrees of freedom over here. Then the degrees of freedom will be replacing this one. Lah. So you check dengan table, baru lah you dapatkan. Ya. So make the correction over here. Okay, sebab yang ni dia adalah assume variance are not equal. So, bila you assume variance are not equal, you can follow through this, the second one here. Eh? So, you kena kenakan yang kedua ni. So, assume that sigma 1 not equal to sigma 2. So, yang ni masih kita same as 1 squared and so on. So, tapi yang bahagian degrees of freedom tu yang berbeza. Okay, degrees of freedom yang berbeza eh. So, yang tu you kena betulkan lah. Okay, so betulkan yang tu. So, yang lain-lain tu lebih kurang sama lah. So, yang ni tak ada masalah. Eh. So, yang ni masih lagi kekal. So, this one is the correct one. Okay, yang ni uh, masih lagi kekal. Eh. So, yang ni betul eh. Cuma yang salah tadi adalah daripada dia punya degrees of freedom tadi. So, yang ni you kena ubah. Okay. So that means bila ubah yang ni, this part also will be different lah. So kalau kita kira, kita akan dapatlah nilai yang sebenar. Okay, so let me just give a quick calculation. Okay, saya kira buat uh, perkiraan sekejap eh. So hold on eh. Kita tengok berapa nilai yang kita dapat eh. Uh, most probably mungkin dia akan dapat nilai yang sama ataupun dia akan dapat nilai yang kurang sikit eh. mungkin jadi 15 instead of 12, uh, 16 dia jadi 15 mungkin eh. so we have 64 divided by 10 square divided by 9 and plus 25 divided by So, you look at yang tu, and then you have sixty-four 
divided by 10 plus 25 divided by 8 square divided by 7. Okay, you should get this value to be around 12.3997. Eh? So approximately here, you can take the decrease of rhythm is equal to 12. So instead of using 16, you need to use 12 actually. Eh? And then you can check lah dengan 12, apa nilai yang you dapat. Okay, so yang tu kena tengok dekat table of uh, distribution. The distribution tengok untuk... This one is alpha to 0 0.05. You check 40, 0 0.025 with degrees of freedom 12 and then look at the value over here. Okay. So, most probably you will get the same answer lah. Sebab kat sini, bila dapatkan nilai ni, you akan dapat lah demi nilai yang sebenar eh. So, of course, the value 40 will be much lower then you will still have the same value to be uh, rejecting the null hypothesis. Okay. So, yang tu perlu betulkan eh, dalam you all punya manual. So, terlepas pandang yang tu eh. Alright. So, any questions on that one? Ada soalan? Tak ada eh? Tak ada eh? Boleh follow eh? Ok, kalau tak ada, kita teruskan dengan kita punya perbincangan untuk uh, today's session. So, for today, we will continue with uh, difference between two mean for dependent sample. Ok, difference between two mean between uh, for the dependent sample. Or sometimes we call this as pet sample test. Eh? So, we call this as pet sample test. Ok. Okay, for pet sample test, normally when we have a pet sample test, whenever we have uh, something like we have before and after, three years before, after, and then now, and so you are comparing between two different uh, time frame, or you have a post and pre and post score, for example, let's say you have students taking uh, exams uh, one month before and today after giving the treatment or after after giving a tuition or something like that so you want to check is there any difference between the score for the previous one with the new one okay so this is what we call as a dependent sample where we collect we collect data from the same uh, object or for the same respondent okay Okay, this is the same example that you see in the previous chapter, chapter 3, so where you have the bank deposits. So, when the values are dependent, do a t-test on differences. Denote the difference with the symbol d bar. Okay, this is what we have done previously. Okay, kita denote with the symbol d bar instead of using the actual values. So, right now you are calculating the difference. So, the difference here is D bar will be the mean of the population difference with mu D, mu D and also a sample standard deviation of the difference with uh, SD. So, SD refer to the standard deviation and mu D refer to the mean. So, in this situation, the formula to calculate the t-statistic is given by d bar minus mu d divided by sd divided by square root of n. So, similar to that, uh, the one that you have done previously. Cuma sekarang ni, kita gantikan saja dia punya parameter tu dengan mu d dan kita gantikan dia punya sample dengan d bar. So, d bar ni adalah main difference eh. And then the degrees of freedom is only n minus 1. So, and n here refer to the number of pairs. So, kita nak tengok dia punya pairing eh. So, kalau katakan dalam contoh example bank deposit ni, the number of pairs is 9. So, you have 9 pair before and after. Okay. So, you have 3 years ago and today data on the bank deposit. So, 1, 2, 3. There are 9 banks all together. So, that means the value of n is equal to 9. Okay, so the value of n here is equal to 9. <coughs> ok, 
Okay, so the value of n here is equal to 9. So you have 9 over here. Okay. So the question right now says that at 0.05%, can it be concluded that the average deposit for the banks is greater today than it was three years ago? Okay. So the provision guys, ni, you have to be very, very careful in terms of writing the hypothesis. Okay, so in this case, when you look at this one, you can see that we can let mu1 be the mean deposit for three years ago, and mu2 will be the mean deposit today. Okay, so in this situation, what you can see here, from the statement itself, you know that it is a one-tail test. Macam mana kita tahu bahawa yang ni adalah one-tail test? Sebab, Dalam kita punya uh, soalan ni, dia nyatakan, can it be concluded that the average in deposit for the bank is greater than? So, dia ada perkataan greater. Okay, dia ada perkataan greater. So, bila ada perkataan greater, that mean there is a direction. Okay, there exists a direction. And in this case, the direction is showing that the deposit for today is greater than deposit for before. So, in this situation, kalau kita katakan kat sini, mu1 is for 3 years ago, mu2 is for today. So, what you can say here, if you compare the value for mu1 and mu2, Bila kita katakan greater than, dia jadi macam mana? So, yang mana lebih besar? So, kita katakan yang 2D ni lebih besar kan? Mu2 lebih besar daripada Mu1. Betul tak? So, that's why you have the symbol Mu1 is less than Mu2. Okay? Mu1 is less than Mu2. So, when you have Mu1 is less than Mu2, okay, the H0 is Mu1 less than Mu2, so, what you can get here will be just mu1 minus mu2 that is less than 0. So, you have this to be mu d less than 0. So, that's why you have here less than. Okay, mungkin akan ada yang tertanya kenapa gunakan less than, kenapa tak gunakan greater than instead of sebab kalau kita baca dekat sini, dia katakan Greater than. So, kalau greater maknanya sepatutnya dia punya symbol tu is greater than. Bukannya less than macam ni. So, in this situation, what you need to do is to look back at how you define mu1 and mu2. Okay. How you define mu1 and mu2 and how you write your hypothesis. Adakah you write mu2 greater than mu1? Ha, kalau you buat macam tu, boleh tak? Kalau katakan saya kata, saya tak nak gunakan mu1 sebab saya nak gunakan ayat tadi tu greater than. So, instead of writing mu1 less than mu2, so, boleh tak saya tuliskan mu2 greater than mu1? Sama tak? So, dalam keadaan ni, dia ni adalah sama. Okay, you can see that this is the same thing. Mu1 less than Mu2 will be the same thing with Mu2 greater than Mu1. Okay. Any problem tak kalau kita tulis macam tu? Secara dasarnya, if you are doing it manually, there is no problem at all. Okay. If you do it manually, calculation everything manually, there is no problem at all. Just that if you are running your analysis using SPSS, then you have to be very, very careful when you insert your variable into the analysis. Okay. So, normally in the analysis, you will have mu1 and mu2. So, in this situation, if you are using this part, then in SPSS, you have to write down, you have to key in mu2 first, then mu1. So, barulah dia akan kira mu2 minus mu1. Okay, so bila kira mu2 minus mu1, dia akan dapatlah greater than 0. So, same thing. Okay, kaedahnya sama. Cuma kat sini dari segi penggunaannya, kalau you kira secara manual, tak ada masalah apa-apa sebab you dah nampak benda tu. 
Tapi kalau you key in, guna kalau you analyze, uh, analysis this uh, problems using SPSS or using any other software, you have to be very careful when you write down the or you enter the variables. Okay, kena hati-hati. Sebab kat sini dia katakan mu2 minus mu1. So, you kena masukkan mu2 dulu. Baru you kena masukkan mu1. Barulah dia akan dapat yang betul. Kalau tidak, you akan dapat nilai negatif. Okay, so in this station when you have this kind of problems, so you have mu1 minus mu2. Less than zero. So that means if this is true, which means that you can conclude that the mean deposit today is greater than the mean deposit three years ago. So macam mana kita nak tuliskan ni dalam bentuk ayat? So kalau yang ni kita boleh tuliskan dah macam bentuk ayat. Kita just ambil macam tadi lah. So mean deposit today ni. So, this one is actually, if you want to write down this in the form of statements, this will be the mean deposit for today is greater than Okay, is greater than. Okay, one minus two. Okay, deposit the mean deposit three years ago. Okay, so that is the solution. So itu kalau katakan kita nak tulis dalam itu statements. Okay, kalau dalam bentuk yang ni, yang depan ni macam sila samalah, the mean deposit for today uh, is equal to the mean deposit for 3 years ago. Right? And then, uh, that is the first thing that you need to do, the first step. So, kita ada 6 step kan? So, the second step will be find the critical value. So, to find the critical value, you need the degrees of freedom. So, the degrees of freedom is given by n minus 1. So, you get 8 over here and the alpha value is equal to 0 0.05. So, in this situation, you need to find the T values for 0 0.05. Okay, you tak perlu bagikan dengan 2. Kenapa tak perlu bagi dengan 2 dekat sini? Sebab this one is a one tail. Macam mana you tahu one tail? Sebab kita lihat kat sini, dia punya... Simbol yang kita gunakan adalah less than. Okay. So, bila simbol yang kita gunakan tu adalah less than is an inequality symbol. is not not equal. Then, you know that this one is a one-tail test. So, bila one-tail test, you tak perlu bahagikan dengan dua dia punya significant level. You only divide by two the significant level. T equal to 0 0.05 divided by two. If you have a two-tail test. But for this situation, it is a one-tail. And to be more specific, it is a left-tail test. Macam mana tahu left-tail? Because you have less than over here. Kalau yang ni greater than, that means you're going to have a right-tail test. Or one-tail test on the right side. On the positive side. So, in this case, kita gunakan yang 1 tail. So, we don't have to divide the alpha with 2. And then, so you have to find 0 0.05 with the degrees of freedom here equal to 8. Okay. So, you look at the tables of frequency, the T distribution table. And locate the confidence interval. So, in this case, the confidence interval is 95%, right? Okay. So, confidence interval is 95%, but in this situation, you want the one tail test to be equal to 0 0.05. So, you think that's enough, 0 0.05, the one tail. Okay, ini daripada tables yang diberi dalam uh, LNG Blumen. So, you kena sesuaikan lah dengan table mana yang you gunakan. Okay, you kena sesuaikan dengan table mana yang you gunakan. 
So kalau you gunakan table yang diberi dalam uh, syllabus eh. Dalam syllabus. Uh, tengok sekejap eh. Saya tengok balik. Sebelumnya okay. okay you have this table right Okay kita tengok table T Okay this is your table T And then they give you the alpha right So that means kita nak tadi Kita nak apa Alpha equal to 0.05 and 8 so you look at 0.05 so yang ni dia tak ada bagi yang 2 tail ke 1 tail so yang ni kalau tengok daripada sini dia sebagi satu nilai alpha so you have to know what is the value of alpha always refer to alpha here with whatever value that you get for t and the degrees of freedom so you want 0.05 and then 8 so you get the value to be again the same thing is 1.860 okay you dapat nilai yang sama iaitu 1.860 kat sini eh. So, 1.860. Okay. So, once you have the value over there. So, this is what is the value for the critical value for left tail. So, that means in this case, kalau you nak lukis, you boleh lukiskan lah. Dah gambar ajar kat sini, dia punya critical value. Okay. Alright, so in this situation, you have the critical value to be 1.86. So, if you want to draw the critical value, okay, you have the value to be negative, right? Okay, negative, yes, but the left tail, eh? so the left tail, kita gunakan negative. So, that means your critical value will be somewhere here. So, this is your critical value. So, this is negative 1.86. Right? And then, based on the data, you calculate your test statistic. So, the test statistic, when you calculate the test statistic, you have the mu d equal to 0 because in this case, kalau tengok dekat your of your hypothesis tadi, you have the hypothesis is mu d equal to 0 for the null hypothesis right so sebab tu kita ada equal to 0 dekat sini ok so this one you have equal to 0 and then d bar is the one that you have calculated from the data given or the one that you can find from the output ok from the output alright so you get this value negative 1.0081 and also the standard deviation given by 1.937 you can manually calculate this from the sample data or you can just obtain this from the SPSS output and then you have n equal to 9 so substitute this value into this formula you get t equal to negative 1.674 so basically in this case t is just simply equal to negative uh, 1.0081 minus 0 and then divided by 1.937 divided by the square root of 9. So you should get the value over here. Okay. So the question, okay, right now, step number five is to make your decision. So in this case, you do not reject, your decision will be do not reject the null hypothesis if the T value is less than the uh, critical value. So in this situation, the rejection region will be this area, eh? Okay, so this will be the rejection region area. Okay, yang ni adalah rejection region. Okay, 
since 1.674 is somewhere here. Okay, this is 1.674, negative 1.674. So here you do not reject H0. So since our test value is negative 1.674, and this value is greater than the critical value negative 1.860 and this is in the not rejecting null hypothesis region so we fail to reject the null hypothesis so bila katakan kita fail to reject the null hypothesis kita kena support lah ok enough evidence eh so null hypothesis dia apa tadi so null hypothesis kata is not mu d is equal to 0 so that means there is no difference right so based on this you make your conclusion there is not enough evidence to show that the deposit have increased ha, kita patah balik kepada kita punya kenyataan tadi kan kenyataan kita kita nak test adakah dia increase ataupun greater right but right now we have proof that there is no difference between the two time frame so that means you can just say that there is not enough evidence to show that the deposit have increased over the last three years or you can say there is not enough evidence to show that the mean deposit for today is greater than the mean deposit for last three years okay so it's up to you untuk macam mana nak buat the summary Tapi biarlah summary itu uh, penulisannya adalah betul lah. Okay. Jangan pula uh, silap tulis eh. So jangan terbalik pula eh. So that is for the example. Macam mana kita nak gunakan. Uh, macam mana kita nak test hypothesis for difference between two means for a dependent sample. Ataupun kita panggil sebagai pet sample t-test. Okay. So this is the procedure on how you can perform this test on SPSS. Okay, again, you key in the data. For well, the first thing that you need to do is starting with key in the data into your SPSS. And then go to the analyze button. Okay, once you key in data, macam ni, so the previous dengan today, three years ago dengan today. And then analyze your, uh, perform your analysis by selecting the analyze tab and then go to compare means and then go to pet sample t-test. So when you key, uh, when you select this analysis, a pop-up window will come up asking you to insert the variable. Ah, ini yang saya katakan tadi ya, sebab tadi kita gunakan mu1 minus mu2. So, in this situation, this is mu1. Okay. This is mu1. This is mu2. Okay. So, kalau kita buat tadi adalah mu1 minus mu2. This is less than 0, right? Menunjukkan bahawa dia lebih besar. Sorry. Uh, saya padam je. Okay, tadi kita gunakan apa tadi? Asal mu1 is less than mu2. Okay. So, bila mu1 less than mu2, so kita ada kat sini the pet variable over here. So, you need to key in under variable 1 the mu1 yang depan ni. And then under variable 2, mu2. Okay. Kalau you nak key in, kalau dia yang ni terbalik, katakan mu2 is greater than mu1 contohnya you buat macam ni ok so bila you nak key in dalam you punya calculator you mesti letak mu2 ni dalam variable 1 ok barulah variable 2 mu1 so yang depan adalah variable 1 yang belakang tu adalah variable 2 ok that is how you key in the correct information into the dialog box ok once you dah masukkan uh, 
variables yang betul dalam email dialog box. So in this case, we are dealing with mu1 minus mu2. Ataupun mu1 is less than mu2. So the next thing is to click on the option button over here. And then, key in the correct confidence interval value. So in our case, we want to set the CI value depending on the questions. Okay, what uh, based on whatever given on the question paper. So, kalau dia katakan dia nakkan you test menggunakan 90% confidence ataupun alpha equal to 0.1. So, that means you have to change this to 90%. 90%. Okay. Uh, yang ni missing value ni kita just ignore je lah. Okay. And then, kita assume there is no missing value eh. Once you have set the confidence interval, the next thing is just click the continue button. So, you will get into this. To run the analysis, you just click the OK button. Okay, click on the OK, press the OK button. And then, it will run the analysis and this will be the result that you get. Okay, on the left side here, give you the data and how you can calculate the mean and the standard deviation manually for the difference between two means for dependent sample. Okay, so kita boleh dapatkan kat sini lah. So, kita dapatkan dia punya D. So, D ni adalah dia punya difference. You take 11, sebab tadi kita guna mu1 minus mu2 kan. So, 11.42 minus 16.6 ni dapat this value. And then you square them, get the sum at the bottom. And then substitute in the formula, you will get the answer for the standard deviation. And this is even same as what you have over here. Okay, you have the standard deviation, 1.93728. You have the mean, negative 1.08111. Okay, and then from here, you can also see that you have the mean and the standard deviation. Right? So, this is the standard error of the mean for the difference. So, you just take the standard deviation divided by the number of pairs, square root of number of pairs. So, you have square root of 9. And then, this gives you the mean standard error. Mean divided by the standard error will give you the uh, t-statistic. So, the t-statistic just now we calculate to be negative 1.674. And this is... Fail to reject the null hypothesis. So, kalau tahu fail to reject the null hypothesis macam mana? So, this one dia bagi significant for two tail eh. So, this is significant for two tail. Tapi, kita punya kajian adalah one tail kan. So, that mean the p-value here will be 0.133 divided by so, this will give you the values to be 0 0.0665. And then, this one is greater than 0 0.05. It's still greater than 0 0.05, right? Okay, so still greater than 0 0.05. That means you still fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so remember, the report given by SPSS is always to tail. Okay, always to tail. So that means, kalau katakan you punya analisa adalah one tail, to get the p-value, you have to divide by two. Okay, you have to divide by two because yang ni diberi dalam bentuk two tail. Okay, boleh okay. Okay, from the table pair sample test, there is a value of t which is negative 1.674, the test value. So, you can obtain t value by making the, taking the difference, the mean difference divided by the standard error of the mean. And you get this to be 1.674. And using the p-value methods, h0 is equal to mu d, h1 to mu d less than 0. So, the same thing. The p-value given here is 0 0.133. And this p-value must be divided by 2 because you are testing for one tail. Okay? So, you are testing for one tail 
distribution. Eh? So that means the p value for one tail is simply equal to the p value given by the table output 0 0.133. You divided it by 2 and you get 0 0.0. 0 0.0665 and you compare this p value with the significant level alpha 0 0.05 so you fail to reject the null hypothesis since the p value is greater than the significant level if the p value is less than the significant level then you reject the null hypothesis but for this situation the p value is greater than 0 0.05 the significant level so you fail to reject the null hypothesis and you conclude that there is not enough evidence to show that the deposit have increased over the last three years <coughs> okay okay this is another example you can try this Okay, so it give you the uh, hypothesis and also the result. So why is it the claim is not equal? So kita tengok balik soalan dia. Macam nak tahu it not equal ke tak? Sebab dia kata kat sini. Can it be concluded that the cholesterol level has changed? Okay, has changed. Okay, dia tanya is the cholesterol level has been changed at alpha 0.02. So, the punya indicator, the keywords here has been changed. So, ada direction tak dalam has been changed? Tak ada direction kan? Dia hanya tanya berubah ataupun tidak. Sama ada berubah dia mening, uh, lebih tinggi ataupun lebih rendah. So, dia tidak ada direction. Okay, there is no specific direction. Tapi kalau dikatakan, can it be concluded that the cholesterol level in uh, cholesterol level has increased ataupun has decreased uh, yang tu ada direction, increase or decrease tapi kalau has been changed there is no direction, it can go both ways, decrease boleh increase boleh as long as it differ uh, itu yang menentukan sama ada kita nak gunakan dalam kita punya hypothesis are we going to use not equal or greater than or less than so you have to read through the questions okay so in this case uh, you can see the result over here find the critical value at alpha 0 0.1 so the critical value is plus minus 2.015 with the degrees of freedom equal to 5 right and then you calculate the test statistic you get the test statistic to be 1.610 and then compare with the critical value and make your decision. So in this case, the decision is do not reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So you can say that there is not enough evidence to support the claim that the mineral changes a person cholesterol levels. Okay, so that is the decision and also the conclusion right so mungkin ada yang tanya kena ke lukis gambar rajah ni ok gambar rajah ni nak lukis boleh tak nak lukis pun boleh dalam exam eh so tapi sebaik-baiknya lukis lah kadang-kadang kita lukis dekat sini dah betul dah tapi bila kita masukkan nilai kat sini dia salah so tak adalah you hilang markah terus macam tu you still get some marks over here ok walaupun kat sini dah tersilap Right, so that is the reason why it is advisable for you to draw the diagram to show the critical value and also the statistical value calculated. Right, so in this case, the T step will be somewhere here lah. Okay, this one eh, T step. So kita boleh nampak. So walaupun kat bawah tu, dekat bahagian penerangan tu mungkin ada tersilap sikit. So at least bila kita nampak gambar rajah ni, kita tahulah you dah buat benda yang betul. Cuma tersilap dekat bawah tu. So, tak adalah dia penalize banyak sangat. Okay. So, that is for the second example. Okay. You can also use the confidence interval. You can also calculate the confidence interval. The same thing like what you did before. So, in this case, uh, you, uh, 
you fail to reject the null hypothesis, kenapa kita gagal untuk menolak null hypothesis? Sebab kita perhatikan kat sini, 0 ada dalam confidence interval. So, konsep yang sama, so whenever you have 0 in the confidence interval, then you fail to reject the null hypothesis. If 0 is not in the confidence interval for the case of uh, greater than or less than 0 and so on, kalau dekat ujung sebelah kanan, the right hand side is 0, Contohnya yang ni, right hand side dia sama dengan kosong kan? Okay, right hand side is equal to zero. So, your comparative value will be zero. Okay, you have to compare this zero with the confidence interval. If the right hand side value is not zero, it is other than value. Contohnya, saya katakan, uh, can it be concluded that the average change is more than five? Okay, kalau katakan average change is more than 5, macam nak tulis. So, maksudnya dia katakan kat sini, mu1 is, kalau katakan mu1, kalau tadi kita nak uh, greater kan. So, dia akan jadi mu1 is less than mu2. Tapi, dia akan greater than 5, more than 5. Yeah, so, mu2 plus 5. Dia akan jadi macam tu lah. So, bila kita ubah dekat sini, dia akan jadi mu1 minus mu2 which is less than 5. Okay. So, kita akan dapat. So, that means bila dapat macam ni, bila nak compare dengan kita punya confidence interval, kita tak boleh guna lah kosong lah. Kita kena guna 5. So, tengok 5 ada tak dalam kita punya confidence interval sebagai contoh. Okay. So, that is the situation in order to use the confidence interval to test your hypothesis. If your right-hand side value is 0, then you compare 0 with the confidence interval. If your right-hand side value is value other than 0, then use that particular value and compare with the confidence interval. Okay, that is the situation, alright? Okay, this is another example on how you going to uh, perform the uh, the analysis using the pet sample t-test. Okay, so just you can dapat result macam ni dan sebagainya lah.